Our call to worship this morning is a poem called How Children See It. When the chalice is lit, children see smoke, they smell sulfur, and wonder when it will be their turn. As the flame rises from nothing, it ignites question after question. This is why we are here together. When we talk of justice, they see pins on a map and they hear names spoken into the air, people they may never meet, but understand what it means to be a true friend. When we open the good books reading words of wisdom, they see an open public library. They carry a wobbly stack of possibilities towards the checkout desk. The Bible, Quran, Hanshan, Eric Carle, Beverly Cleary and Mirabai. Excellent choices, my friends. When we are in quiet meditation, they wink at each other and try to keep from laughing out loud, knowing that it is, a, it is itself a leap of faith to close your eyelids and focus on what's behind them. Yet they know that the divine lives as much in our laughter as in our silence. When we sing, hearts soar, and we are united. Words and melody come alive and live on. When we are not here, we remember our time together differently. We remember the words, the sentiment, the message. They remember dandelion seeds in the air, the smell of coming rain, the candlelight, triscuits and juice, the importance of a question. And this keeps us whirling around the wheel of time until we meet again. Let us now welcome the young people into worship. They carry banners representing the seven principles of Unitarian Universalism. Please welcome them by singing along with hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. and come in, enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day, enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your ears to the song, open your ears to the song. Today will be a joyful day, enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Don't be afraid of some change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Good morning. My name is Patricia McChesney and I am chair of the Children and Youth Religious Education Committee. It is my pleasure to invite you into today's worship. If this is your first time joining us or the first time in a long time, please feel free to write a quick email to the address below to introduce yourself. You'll receive a, a link to a special welcome Zoom circle following the service. 
Before we get too much further into the worship, let us take a moment to acknowledge that USNH sits on land sacred to the Quinnipiac and other Native nations. We are committed to healing the traumas of the past and seeking, seeking justice in the present. May it be so. There is one important announcement to share today. The Covenantal Relations Committee is hosting a listening circle at 1130. All are welcome. The link to this meeting is in the newsletter and an email inviting you to today's service. This morning, we invite the children who are moving up today to lead the chalice lighting. At USNH, moving up is a rite of passage and a program for third graders and older children who have not yet moved up to celebrate their, em, these children's emerging identities as young Unitarian Universalists. And it, we also acknowledge their readiness to take a larger role in our religious community. This year, we honor Annalise, who was unable to join us, but is pictured here. We also honor Levi, Elijah, L, David, Benjamin, and Nolan those who have completed the requirements to move up. They will now help us light the chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalism. Please feel free to say the words along with them as they appear on your screen. We will light this chalice for the light of truth. We will light this chalice for the warmth of love. We will light this chalice for the energy of action. Just as children of other faiths have different rites of passage to mark their spiritual development and have implement, we have implemented moving up as a transitional rite in our children's Unitarian Universalist faith journey. The rite symbolizes that these children have achieved new elevated status within our community. In the process of moving up, these eight children have accomplished. They have demonstrated their understanding of the seven Unitarian Universalist principles They've learned about the chalice lighting as a symbol of our religious uh, of, of our religious faith. They learned about today's chalice lighting. They learned about the important people and events in U UU faith tradition, some of them, including John Murray, Francis Ellen Watkins Harper, William Ellery Channing, and the consolidation of Unitarianism and Universalism. They have created their own unique stoles with symbols representing the important elements of their own UU faith. And finally, they have read the book Sunday and Every Day, My Little Book of Unitarian Universalism. Now that they have moved up, these children will join the many who came before them in an, with an open invitation in the coming years to serve our congregation as ushers, greeters, fellowship hosts, chalice lighters, and other, um, other tasks in multi-generational services. We honor this promise by presenting them with chalice pins, just like this one. We now invite you watching this service at home to join in the congregational recommitment to our children. Would you please read the words with me that appear on your screen? We trust in the divine spark of each child and we pledge ourselves to their nurture. May we be worthy guardians of these young lives. May we do all that we can to build a world that will nurture them with beauty, embrace them with love and cradle them in the arms of peace. This concludes our moving up ritual. Please join me in congratulating Levi, Elijah, L, David, Benjamin, Annalise, and Nolan, and inviting them more deeply into our congregational life. To honor them, Cedro Grice Salazar, who moved up four years ago, has prepared a special song called Ping Pong.
Covenant lies at the center of Unitarian Universalism. It's how our communities gather, and it is how we have promised to treat each other, and how we come back together when we fall short. While the following words express our intentions in writing, our true covenant lives and breathes in our actions. Please join me now in reciting the words that appear on your screen. We covenant together to create and nurture a culture of respect and kindness, and to engage in the spiritual and everyday practice of loving more generously. To this end, we will strive to be open, value differences, listen deeply, use kind language, speak our truths, work with conflict, seek humor and joy. The Reverend Jesse Jackson once said, children need your presence more than your presence. Well, Reverend Jackson, I can assure you that while as a child, I did get pretty excited about presence. I now understand your words, since I can hardly remember any of the objects that were given to me on birthdays, holidays, etc but I can most certainly remember the presence of so many wise mentors and adults in my life. These included teachers, family members, parents of friends, camp counselors, and of course, the amazing people of USNH who took time out of their busy lives to talk with me, teach me in RE classes, tell me stories, act with me in plays and musicals, and even dress up as Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. It might not have seemed like a big deal at the time, and I might have seemed more interested in the playground outside or the frosted Entenmann's cake sitting there on a napkin across the room calling my name. But your presence made a difference. You taught me that living a principled life is an essential element of living a happy, healthy life. You taught me the golden rule before I could even tie my own shoes. You taught me to jump into learning and exploring the world around me and to listen to what others have to say about it. At the same time, you taught me how to draw my own conclusions even if they were different from what others believed, even if they were different from what you believed. You taught me to lift up my voice and sing, but also to lift my voice in protest whenever and wherever injustice presented itself. Perhaps most importantly, you taught me how to recognize, accept, and change 
when the injustice I perceived was coming from me. Now, as an adult, a father, and a religious educator, I continue to deepen my spiritual connection to others through USNH. I realize that a congregation like this is among the few truly multi-generational sharing and learning spaces left in our society. You, the children and young people of USNH, are so dear to me and to us. We learn from you. We hold great hope for you. And we give you the space you need to learn and grow. Each year, volunteers come from all corners of the community to spend time with you in classes and events, not just because they want to teach, but because they themselves learn and grow and deepen their own spiritual journeys by spending that time with you. You, the adults of USNH, I thank you for opening your minds, your hearts, your patience, and your perspective to children and youth. I know it is not always easy, but the presence of wisdom, joy, laughter, and learning will only be unwrapped through continued, deep, meaningful presence in each other's lives. Blessed be. In this spiritual community, we remind ourselves each week that joy and woe are woven fine. Some of us bear burdens made lighter as others help us carry it. Some of us hold joys that shine more brightly as others reflect our delight. This week, we're saddened to announce that John Pollock died on May 31st. He was 79 years old. His family welcomes your cards and calls. For all of the joys and sorrows that remain unspoken in the silent sanctuary of our hearts, we also hold those up. Together, let us give thanks for this community of care. Today's meditation is a little bit different from what you might think of as normal USNH meditations. To the adults who are watching, I invite you now to look inward and connect with the child within you. Children who are watching, I invite you to be exactly how you are. Many children find sanctuary in virtual spaces these days, digging up glittering Minecraft gems by the glowing light of discovery. In virtual space, you can enjoy limitless lives and the ability to pick and choose your community with a single keystroke or swipe. At times, I live vicariously through my son as he instantly respawns after every mistake, stronger and more confident. It reminds me of the words we sing on Sunday mornings. Though you've broken your vows a thousand times, come yet again, come. Control in the virtual world is a comfort but can sometimes be as illusory as in real life. Bullies do find their ways into comment sections as often as they find us in the hallways of a school, the roadways of a town, or even government buildings. The connection with others, with other players is real, but can become distant and glitchy. And in my humble opinion, a real life hug from the heart, sparks more joy than any emojis or gif can offer, no matter how many times it spins and shines on the screen. 
a good old-fashioned unforced conversation complete with the subtleties of body language and eye twinkles will say more than a well-crafted 280 character tweet any day. Unitarian Universalists are collectors, miners if you will. We are collectors of truth, miners of words, art, and music, collectors of divine ideas that shed their immutability in our presence and glitter like eight-bit diamonds unearthed one pixel at a time. What will we do with the riches we mine during our time together? Will we dot the landscape with castles or fashion a tree-filled farm? Will we trade for crafting tables and healing potions or venture out into uncharted areas unencumbered? Will we forge swords or pickaxes or perhaps plowshares? The beauty of a free and independent search for truth and meaning is that we will likely do a little bit of everything along the way. We will explore endless levels until we find our place. We will sometimes play in creative mode, where building and moving happen without the bother of gravity and physics. Imagination is, after all, so important to living a full life. Most of all, we will fill our minds and hearts with the power of love, logic, community, and learning. These will be the greatest tools of all, and they will be our guide through this non-virtual world. As we now enter a time of shared silence to reflect, imagine yourself creating, sharing, treasuring deep connections and profound love with all who mine for truth alongside us in real life. Let us share silence together. May our collective journey of discovery be blessed. Each of us has gifts to share, whatever our age, ability, gender, or race. Sometimes it's showing your parent how to build a world in Minecraft. Sometimes it's consoling a friend. Sometimes it's teaching third graders about Unitarian Universalism. And sometimes it's supporting the congregation with a financial gift. Help USNH continue to celebrate our children's gifts by making as generous a donation as you can. You can give securely online at usnh.org slash offering, or you can mail a check to USNH 700 Hartford Turnpike, Hamden, Connecticut, 
0-6-5-1-7. Thank you for your generosity. Our story this morning is called Sarah's Gift. Eleven-year-old Sarah Guzman had a problem. Even though she stayed busy doing many, many things from morning to night, she did not know what she was great at. She enjoyed school and got pretty good grades. She participated in clubs and sports teams. She took music lessons and always tried out for Turnpike Players musical productions. However, unlike Sally, Tamina, and Jerry, she never won the spelling bees or received ribbons at the science fairs. She just had a closet full of honorary mentions and participation certificates. Still, she always congratulated them and felt happy for their good fortune. And unlike Guillermo, Selena, and Timmy, when she participated in competitive games, she could not strike fear in the hearts of opponents, no matter if they were sitting on the other side of a chessboard or standing on the other end of a soccer field. Still, she cheered them on and clapped loudly when their awards were presented. Furthermore, when her mother said she played a mean French horn, Sara was never selected to sit in the front row of the orchestra or sing solos the way that Emma, Alex, or Shojin were. Yet at the end of the concert, she always stood and applauded them right along with the rest of the audience. Do you know what else? Even though she was never excluded from any play or musical, She did usually wind up being someone represented as much by a number as by a name. Let's see, she played the part of angel number four, she was bystander number two, and she was even one time yellow number five. One night, when the spring rain had chilled Sarah into an early bedtime, she told her mother, I will never be as good as those other kids. They all have so much talent. And I'm always behind. Don't worry, her mother said. Everyone has a special talent. You just haven't discovered what yours is yet. But mom, everyone I know is either a musician, an actor, an artist, a writer, an athlete, or a great student. Meanwhile, I am perfectly average at everything. Oh, my dear, dear heart, I love everything you do, and I'm quite sure that you haven't tried everything. Maybe your special talent lies in something that's less obvious than school or clubs or teams. But like what? What else is there? asked Sara, her eyes wider than a CYRE curriculum guide. Her mother smiled gently and replied, let me try to answer by sharing with you what the dear people in your life have told me through the years. For example, when you were in the last spelling bee, you lost. But while many of the other kids left after they were out, Ms. Zhao told me that you stayed until the end and you even cheered for the winner. And when your team made it to the championship soccer game, your coach, Dr. Reinbrenner, almost cried when they saw you running over to help another girl get up 
when she fell and scraped her knee, even though it meant leaving your position open for a minute or two. Then, when you started fourth grade and joined the school orchestra, the director, Mr. Kind, he called me to tell me how you, you encouraged everyone in the back row to play with their heads up, loud and proud, and then led the applause when the concert was over. Honey, whether you are bystander number two in the musical or the lead role, whether you're kicking the goals or cheering from the sidelines, there is one thing everyone who has ever been around you knows. You are the champion of love and kindness. You are a champion of compassion and encouragement. You, my darling, have the gift of empathy, and you have inspired so many people with it. Sara said nothing for a moment, replaying those moments her mother had repainted across her mind, realizing that she'd never quite noticed how deeply connected she was to her beloved community. What a strange talent to have. Had she predicted, uh, had she practiced to become so good at love? She honestly couldn't remember. Before she knew it, her arms were around her mother's neck and she was hugging her tighter than a warm blanket on a cold evening. You see that? Said her mother. You even knew that I needed that hug right now. That is your gift. And you know what, Sarah? I know many people who would never trade one of your hugs for all the perfect concerts and all the perfect grades and all the perfect games in the world.
Affirmations, coming of age, is the second important rite of passage in Unitarian Universalism at USNH. After moving up, our affirmation students spend the year studying the history of Unitarian and Universalism. They typically each year take a trip to Boston to study heritage and culture of Unitarianism and Universalism. This year they were unable to do that. But our group this year was able to camp out behind USNH, and at that camp out, they recorded credo statements, statements of where they are at in their faith journey. Each student was asked uh, to what degree and in what context they would like to share their videos, and three of the six students opted to share their videos here today in this service with you. So we will now hear from Willow, Liam, and Charlotte. These are their credos. My name is Willow. I'm 13, a proud nerd, a musician, an atheist, and a Unitarian Universalist. I don't believe in the supernatural or the divine, and I believe that everything has a scientific explanation. Even if the supernatural and divine do exist, there would be a scientific explanation as to how. But humanity will not live forever, and therefore we will not find the scientific explanation for everything. This also means that we will always have more to discover. I'm also a vegetarian because I don't want to kill animals for my consumption when there are good alternatives for my nutrition. It's also less damaging to the environment as meat uses significantly more resources and outputs significantly more emissions than plant-based alternatives. My favorite band is System of a Down and I dress in a modern emo aesthetic, mostly just because I like how it looks, but it also indicates that I probably listen to rock or metal music, and it also indicates that I have a higher likelihood of accepting other fringe communities. And also, in an abstract sense, I think it fits with my personality. This is my credo. This is what I believe to the best of my explanation skills. This may change with time and further explanation, but that's what science is for. I used to think that religion was a thing, a thing that multiple people believe, but I realized that all religion was had core roots, like the teaching of Jesus and the Ten Commandments. I then asked myself, what do I believe? Thinking that I would come up with just main things. Instead, I came up with billions of beliefs. I then took out all the things I didn't believe, saying that I expressed that with the things I did believe in. I then took out the useless beliefs, like hot dogs are delicious. I ended up with 10 key things, 10 facts, 10 commandments. I, I sat down and said, yes, I had them. They are number one. There is a heaven and hell. Number two, I am polytheistic. I believe in many gods. Number three, you must face trials after you die. Number four, the gods can see everything. Number five, you can cancel your sins, meaning that you can do things to like um, repay them. Number seven, love thyself and die around it. Number eight, be a peacekeeper. Number nine, you have the right to stop anything wrong. Number 10 is, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. Charlotte, Charlotte Stover. Yep, that's me. Ever since I was little, my friends have always asked me, what's your religion? What holidays do you celebrate? And what do you know about your culture? And for the longest time, I didn't know. When I asked my parents about it and they said we were Unitarian Universalists, I was like, eh? They proceeded to tell me what it was and I was, I kind of understood. But as a young child, I always had this assumption that you had a specific belief, a set in stone thing, 
or set of rules to always follow. But looking over my time at USNH, I realized that it's your life, your experiences, your path. You can be what feels right to you. You can make choices that are comfortable for your life path. And that's what's important. I like to believe that magic exists, that there's something out there that put us all where we are. But I don't think God made us the way we are. I think that's that who we are is for us to decide. So the next time someone asks me, what's your religion? I'll know what to say. It's whatever feels right and wherever I feel I belong. We extinguish this flame with not the light of truth, the, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. Need we carry our hearts until we are together again. What is your gift? What are the presents you offer? Be it music, art, story, leadership, a well-timed hug, or a well-timed band-aid. There are thousands of gifts one can share across generations and across the interconnected web of existence. All you are asked is that you share it. After all, your presence is your present, my friends. Go in peace. Go in love. Blessed be.